Hi, I'm Gabe from The Brainstormers. Today we will talk about the different sensors, how they are used, and why you would want to use them in FTC. Let's start with the infrared or IR sensor. It is simple to wire and essentially acts as a crude distance sensor. An IR sensor sends out an infrared signal which reflects off an object. The intensity of the returned signal determines the rough distance of the object. Think about knowing whether an, ob an object is in your intake system. To solve that problem, the IR sensor can be used since it is small and can fit into a small space as shown here. The problem with an IR sensor is that the range is not very large, making it useful only for measuring across short distances. Also, it's not meant for measuring precise distances since the amount of reflected light can vary depending on the environment. Since it's an analog sensor, the distance is returned as a voltage, which can vary slightly depending on the voltage of your battery. Therefore, it is mainly used in true or false readings rather than specific values. The REV 2 meter sensor is the one laser sensor that's allowed by FTC. It works by sending out one laser signal and measuring the time it takes for the signal to bounce back. This sensor returns an I2C signal, which contains a precise distance and can be a lot more accurate than the IR sensor. Therefore, it can be used to measure an actual distance rather ju than just whether an object is present. One limitation is that the object has to be opaque and the walls used in FTC may not reflect the light properly. Ultrasonic sensors, such as this one, send an ultrasonic audio signal and then wait for the sound to be reflected back calculating distance based on the time required. They can handle longer distances than IR sensors, up to 6 meters or more, but are not able to handle very short distances as well. An ultrasonic sensor is not used in competition because it can cross paths with the signal from another robot, leading to inaccurate readings. Modern robotics provides a combination of IR and ultrasonic sensors in this one sensor, which can sense both short and long distance but we haven't used it much in competition. The limit switch is a simple touch sensor which returns a true or false value depending on whether or not it is activated. The limit switch is practical for situations where you just need to know if an object is in a certain place. For example, a limit switch can be used to know when the robot has navigated to a target. In lifts, limit switches may be used in determining when the lift is at the bottom of the structure. Limit switches are not as useful for game objects because they are often not heavy enough or hard enough to press the switch. Touch sensors, such as this one, by REV, serve a similar purpose as limit switches. They are easier to wire, but are harder to trigger because of the small button. Color sensors are very useful for applications and can be used in a variety of ways. They return the RGB or red, green, and blue values of an object through an I2C connection. They can be used like an IR sensor to detect if an object is present. They can also be used to distinguish between different colored game pieces, for example, a red and blue ball. They can also be mounted to the bottom of a robot to detect lines on the field. Depending on how you mount the sensor, you may be able to detect the number of game elements that you are holding. To increase accuracy of this sensor, you should turn on its flashlight, which is located here. Magnet sensors detect if there is a magnetic field near it. They can be used to detect when robot components are near each other without requiring them to touch. One example is detecting a lift being at the bottom of its range by attaching a magnet to the lift and using the sensor at the base. Gyro sensors return the heading and tilt from its original initialized position. A good BNO 055 sensor, like this one, is already included in Rev Control Hub and Expansion Hub. Depending on how you mount your control hub, you may need to recalibrate this sensor before getting accurate readings. This sensor is very useful for tracking robots heading and also whether the robot is flat against the ground. There are multiple types of encoders, including those that are built into FTC-approved motors. Right now, we will talk about external encoders that are attached to passive Omni wheels. These encoders are useful because they allow us to track the position of our robot. 
These encoders go on the bottom of the robot along the x and y axes. When the robot moves, the encoder rotates and their combined rotation values can be used to calculate the position. We recommend using the REV encoder since they work well and aren't too expensive. The US Digital S4T encoders are also great but cost more. Their E4T encoders are cheaper but are prone to dust problems. Finally, the SignsWise encoders are cheapest but are difficult to mount. The Pixie sensor is a camera that detects objects of certain colors. You can train the Pixie to recognize specific colors such as this red ball. In the simplest use, you can connect it to an analog port which it returns the X position of the largest object. You can also connect it to an I2C port which returns X and Y positions for multiple objects. Computer vision with either an external webcam or the phone camera can be done using OpenCV, Vuforia, or TensorFlow. Even though it can require a lot of coding and tuning, computer vision gives you many options for detecting the size and positions of objects relative to the robot. We recommended a package called Easy OpenCV, which lets you integrate OpenCV without too much work. There are many tutorials online on how to use OpenCV to detect colors and contours of an object, as you can see here. This is an overview of the sensors that can be used for FTC. Thanks for watching.